Hi, I'm Ashley, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you the three things that I wish I had known before becoming a full-time wedding and event florist. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that people don't really talk about much in this industry is just the sheer amount of stress and anxiety that's on the day of your event. So I really mostly do weddings. I don't do a lot of events. I don't do any other type of weekly deliveries. I have a floral studio in my home, and I think the biggest thing that I learned super quickly is that there is just, at a wedding is like any other event really, right? Um, there is so much about a wedding that is truly a once in a lifetime experience for so many people. So there's a lot of pressure on that day and there's a lot of pressure to do things exactly the way your client wants because it's the happiest day of their lives theoretically. <laughs> um, and so they have a lot of expectations and pressure they put on themselves, on you, on their family. And so you really have to learn how to manage those expectations before, during, and after the event, potentially. Um, I like working in some of those kind of high stress kind of situations and problem solving. I, I enjoy those things, but it's something that I really had to navigate and learned a lot from over the years. Okay, number two, um, there is a lot of weekend work. So um, that obviously you probably know thinking about being a wedding or event florist, but in case you weren't sure about that, <laughs> um, that's something that I, I knew but didn't really totally understand uh, fully until I was like really doing it like on a pretty consistent, almost weekly basis. So you're really working if you have a Saturday event and that's like Wednesday, maybe you get the flowers and Thursday, Friday, you're doing the arranging. And then Saturday, you're setting up Saturday night, Sunday, you're cleaning up. So it's really, I mean, it's a very intense um, and labor filled kind of um, job that is mostly weekends. I do have events sometimes that are not on the weekends or weddings even that are not on the weekends, but for the most part, it's very weekends heavy. So just be prepared for that. Okay. So number three is interesting. And I think something that a lot of creatives, like regardless of what you do as a creative, like what your profession is, we have to deal with this, but um, particularly in floral design. So the cost of flowers has gone up like 30% just in the last, I think nine months or a year. And so a lot of people don't understand like budget wise, how much they have to think about like for floral design, and particularly with my weddings, I do have like a minimum. And so, um, you know, people are spending more than just like a DIY wedding to, to um, you utilize my services. And it's absolutely worth it. And the end result is always beautiful. I stand by that. Um, but a lot of times you really have to educate your client, um, particularly wedding and event clients on the value of, you know, um, the floral design piece, how much flowers cost, what they should expect budget wise. And so I've really grown to appreciate when people have, like if you have a, an event minimum or a budget investment minimum to have that on their website. I think that's really becoming a trend um, unless you're in like the ultra luxury world where like people don't even care how much your services cost, which is fine too. Um, I'm not necessarily in that space. So I think it's really helpful to have a budget like listed on your website if you have it like an investment minimum or how much people should expect maybe a little bit of a breakdown on how much a bouquet is or an arrangement. I think it really helps to set those expectations early and help people understand like what goes into that? What are the costs associated with certain things that and and pieces that you provide or or aspects of the floral design? So there are design fees, there are labor fees. These are all things that you know you want to make sure you're just being really transparent about, so that people aren't surprised by you know the first draft proposal that they receive, um, or that they think it's you know it's just quote unquote too much. I'm super grateful that has not happened much to me because I do try to be really transparent from beginning to end. But it does still happen. And I think in creative industries, right, people sometimes, because it comes so naturally for some of us, like I can create a beautiful floral meadow in a relatively short amount of time if I have the right resources and people. But you know how many years it took me to get those resources and people? It took me a lot of education, a lot of time, a lot of resources, and you can't just replicate that. And so it's, it's you know, making sure you're advertising that so that the right clientele who really appreciate that artistic work are looking for you. Um, so those are my thoughts. That's what I wish I had known <laughs> when I started a long time ago, well, 15 years ago. Um, and I hope that it resonates with, with you and that you uh, enjoy learning more on our channel, Garden and Grace Florals. Until next time.